Hey everyone, this is Flack88. Welcome to Operation Drago 1.3 Soviet Global Command. Rock and roll. Let's get into it. Okay. So we have no random event on turn one for Soviet Global. Uh, that is instead rolled on turn two. So we'll move into the planning phase. We have no damage to repair, but we will go straight into our technology. And we're going to go for AMD. Computers on a three. And last but not least, and I got a lovely D20 to annotate this. Uh, number 14 is um, Advanced Airborne Doctrine. So here we are. Marked on the side and color coded. Here we go. Looking for big numbers. Okay. All right. I'll take that. So it looks like we missed AMD, but we got computers. We're going to stage two. And we got Airborne Doctrine, stage three. Two. Outstanding. All right, so tech. Now we're going to global operations. Per our nice little list here. So we do have a couple things to uh, resolve via global operations, and we have counterinsurgency. So if you guys haven't seen Admiral Seabass's War College videos on insurgency, we got to try to remove a U.S. insurgent in Afghanistan and the U.S. insurgent in Nicaragua. So per the scenario two rules, special rules, we get a smidge better chance to win these insurgencies, or counterinsurgencies, excuse me. So each advisor we use, we get two dice, and then we get to purchase two. So we get four dice each a 10 or higher is uh is a successful counterinsurgency so let me grab some non-biased red dice uh, we are paying the two dollars each so we'll, we'll roll four for afghanistan and four for nicaragua and we'll see what happens We'll start with Afghanistan. Here we go. Looking for tens or higher. Look at that. One five nine nine. <laughs> Fun. We'll uh, resolve that here after I roll uh, Nicaragua. So I'm going to do orange for Nicaragua. Mix it up. Same exact dice. Same exact results. And we got an eleven here. Okay. So, all right, so I'm going to read this straight out of the book. The counterinsurgency. So this, in this case, the insurgency succeeds. So we eliminate the insurgent. We will eliminate all land units belonging to the target miner. So that's this tank. And all units belonging to a major faction. So these lovely Soviet helicopter units are now gone. That's very, very sad. That's $12 worth of stuff. Just poof. <laughs> all right, so this will form a military pact with U.S. Global. This just got really interesting. Captain G is going to be very happy. Very thrilled. All right. Convert all land and naval units to the new major faction. There are none. And add one light infantry to the minor faction. Plus a light infantry for each IPP. So... I believe this is just one IP, or one uh, light infantry, excuse me. Because 
there is no IPP value, so we'll put one light infantry. All right. Also place any inherent light infantry paramilitary at this time. Okay, all righty. So let's go ahead and uh, resolve our PRF over here. So since, there we go. So since we successfully removed this insurgent, these are now, or Nicaragua, excuse me, is now PRF. So this kicks off the PRF rules. And there's quite a bit here. Uh, there's a whole historical background. I won't read that. Um, but the event is described as follow. PRF is formed if the Soviet Global Command wins counterinsurgency in Nicaragua or El Salvador. Uh, that is to be determined on the, so or the U.S. Global 1.4. Place a PRF roundel in each zone, as done. In each PRF land zone, place one inherent, excuse me, place inherent units, as well as one additional light infantry in SAM. So, we will place uh, the inherent unit, which it does not get any since it starts with inherent, so we will add the additional fight infantry and a sand. Um, I'm just gonna pull it over here and a sand like so. Okay. PRF is a communist front controlled by Soviet Global Command. PRF has a defense treaty with Soviet Global Command. The PRF is also a minor faction. PRF may place one insurgent per turn automatically during the insurgency section. So this section of the following turn. In any adjacent PRF land zone. Uh, PRF may never place this insurgent in Panama or Mexico. U.S. Global does not... If U.S. Global does not attempt counterinsurgency against PRF insurgent, like this one in El Salvador, then the U.S. command does not receive an escalation income increase when the PRF insurgency succeeds. The U.S. Global Command must use its advisor in any paid counterinsurgency attempt against the PRF unless all advisors are used in other paid insurgency attempts. The PRF may not attack any major, minor, or neutral unless specified by an event, but the U, uh, excuse me, but the Soviet player may move PRF land units and air units amongst PRF land zones without restriction. All PRF naval units must end the Soviet turn adjacent to a PRF land zone. The PRF will sign a military pact with Soviet Global when the US and Soviet Global commands are at war. Intervention allowed. PRF is a communist front. All interventions against communist fronts are allowed at the appropriate DEFCON levels. Uh, Soviet Global may send military aid of two units. Uh, this includes armed sales, uh, the negative one discount for red skies, negative one discount for infantry class mechanized infantry units. This stacks with the arms sales discount. All right. That is PRF. PRF is now formed. I'll take it since I lost Afghanistan. Very, very sad. So this moves us into our... Okay, so we just did counterinsurgency, so we're going to move to purchase of units, military aid, and all that fun stuff. So... I'm going to slightly edit my buy. So I'm gonna put this back on the build chart. I take this $6 off and replace it with an airborne. 
and a military aid of a SAM, two PRF, I'm going to use the arm sales for a night minus one and the Red Skies discount for a minus one. So this SAM will cost me one buck, one APP, excuse me. And then, since I cannot use my arm sales twice, you only use the total value once, this light infantry I will also send via military aid, and it will have a negative one discount for uh, for being a infantry class. So that costs two. I will upgrade a minor shipyard to a major for six. And those insurgency dice are already paid for. And then at my remaining four, I will spend on an airborne. All right. Might be wondering why Soviets start with such little money. It's a balance. Um, portion of the game. Since it's the first turn, Soviets start at 37, but our starting income is 17. So, All right. Those are our buys. Okay, we do not generate missiles or anything. We're not at war with a major. No nukes, no combat. But we will do some combat movements. And we have a couple of them, so... Let's just put the camera here. Zoom out a smidge. All right. So from Western Ukraine, right here, I have three land class units that will use the major army base to strategically land move. This is a plus one to their normal land movement, which is two. The plus one will give it to three. So we're going to go one, two, three. Oh, hold on. One, two... Pfft, still can't count. One to Eastern Ukraine, two to Northern Caucasia, and three down to Southern Caucasia. So that is an artillery, a triple A, which we are now calling a SAM. Thank you, Captain G, for that lovely change. It's going to take me a while to remember to call this a SAM. <laughs> and a next-gen MBT, so we'll take those off. Cool, cool. All right, so from Western Ukraine, I'm gonna move f using a plus one. Nope, just, excuse me, just normal movement. One, two, move that attack helicopter from Western Ukraine to Volgograd. And way up up here at the top of the map, we're going to fly this air security fighter one, two, three, four down to Volgograd. And might reach around the board for this. Look at these lovely task fork markers I got from Storkle Board Gaming. Very nice. Okay, so up here in Murmansk, can you see this? Yep, we're going to take my TU-22, we're going to fly 1-2 to Moscow for some aerial training. We're going to take the Marine out of Leningrad, he's going to hop up here to Murmansk. And then, last but not least... Excuse me, not even last. We're going to take the battle cruiser, our lovely Kiev class battle cruiser, via the battle cruiser and battleship expansion. We're going to move him in port. Put him in the right port here, and his corresponding ASW Hilo will go into Murmansk. Very fun. All right, so now coming out of port, I have two diesel electric subs. In port or not, we are technically an A9. So using our major shipyard bonus, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, two, A11. We 
Oops, excuse me. Just like that. All right, they're just gonna sit down there in uh, Danish Straits doing some oceanic research. Nothing to see here at all. Don't read into that, Captain G. Just some subs. Nothing to do. All right, very good. This concludes our non-combat. We'll go ahead and move into our end of turn phase. We'll, we will place our units. Okay, so we'll place this airborne in Western Ukraine. Zoom in there, lovely. Our upgraded shipyard will be up here in N1. Excuse me. And then our military aid delivery. Via manufacture in, where did I come from? We'll come from Western Ukraine. They'll go down, they'll go through here, yada, yada, yada. All the way down here and we'll go Nicaragua. And I'll grab a chip for this guy. Beefing up our PRF forces down here in Nicaragua, very good. Okay. All right, so that concluded our military aid delivery. We'll collect our income, which we are now at 37. We spent every dollar, so there we are, 37. Um, we are not at war with uh, another power, so we do not determine military aid to other theaters quite yet. And that is the end of my to-do. So let's do a quick disposition. Um, nothing changed other than Volgograd. We're at, um, con uh, we're containing a, an attack helo, a fighter, AS fighter, and a strategic bomber. Western Ukraine is two airborne and a fighter. Southern Caucasia, a Formex next gen artillery, and a SAM. Hey, hey SAM. Uh, Nicaragua is now PRF. We have two SAMs, three light infantry, and an attack helo. Afghanistan is very sadly U.S. possessed. Very sad. That makes things very much a pain in the butt for me. Okay. And then another flyby. Look at how nice those look. And then lastly, we've got our two Foxtrot diesel electric subs in A11. And there's a quick snapshot at the card for all three navies. We've got Murmansk, Leningrad, and our Black Sea Fleet. Very good. All right. We'll kick this off to Captain G for 1.4. Quick shot at the tech. That looks nice, very good. Okay, take care everyone.